Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome to Apple Weekly number 30, I believe. This is of course the show where I cover everything Apple, both on YouTube and iTunes. The links are on the screen or in the description below. Before we get started, of course, I'd like to say thanks to our two sponsors, ParcelMonkey.com, fantastic courier guys, and of course, the iGear jacket itself. Both the links are on your screen, and before we get started, you guys are looking at me and saying, what on earth is that under my iGear jacket? Let me just kind of point this out. This is what I've been doing for the past couple of months, I guess, and uh, it's nicely summed up in this graphic. Starting off with the next Apple product, which is going to be, of course, the iPhone 5, to be announced sometime this month. Whether it's launched this month, that is an entirely different story, but there's been some leaks, as has been the case for the past three or four weeks, and the latest leak is the Best Buy website, or the Best Buy memo has been leaked to a few websites. So as you can see from the memo on screen, this is the leak, this is the memo being sent out to all Best Buy employees, and it says, iPhone 5 expected not confirmed, expected, uh, and then pre-sale starting 1st of October, kind of makes sense, being announced end of September, and then, you know, a week, two weeks down the line, where hey, we have the iPhone 5. Adding to this, this next group is probably the most credible leak we've seen in terms of the iPhone 5. This document, as you can see, shows there's some sort of Apple fixture installation at a Best Buy store. However, what's kind of more dodgy or fishy is the fact that the manager has to be there for 6 o'clock in the morning and that's unusual because managers don't get there till 7am and the document clearly points out it is an Apple fixture installation. The exact same procedure happened with the iPhone 4, so why will it be any different from the iPhone 5? And Best Buy is holding an employee meeting on the 10th of October to discuss a big or major announcements and if that really isn't a hint towards the iPhone 5 which hasn't been updated for more than a year, I don't know what it could be. And also thanks to 9to5Mac for pointing this out, the 23rd of October is going to be the 10th anniversary of the iPod. So could that be a magical a surprise the iPhone 4 is being launched? Hey, just putting that out there. Moving on to the second story, a welcome back party is being hosted for Final Cut Studio. Of course, once Final Cut Pro X was launched, Final Cut Studio was ditched, but now it's being brought back after much criticism, and you only have to look at the, you know, the Mac App Store reviews for Final Cut Pro X. That kind of sums everything up. There's been a lot of criticism. You know, YouTubers like myself love it. You know, they think it's the best thing since sliced bread, and I agree with that. Um, it's just, I've said in a different video, you know, it's just much more of a smoother upgrade from iMovie, uh, but, you know, having all those pro features. Whereas people who've been using this in the kind of pro field, and by pro field I mean like films and video and filmmaking, documentaries, people who have been using Final Cut Studio for a number of years uh, have been, you know, disappointed because of the lack of features, and not every, it wasn't really polished off. Some things are still to be updated, uh, you know, and the, an Apple ditching Final Cut Studio entirely, saying, you know, we're not going to sell this, um, was just kind of pointing out that they're not going to support it in, you know, in the future. And for Apple to bring back Final Cut Studio, I think, is a good move. So hopefully they will still, you know, cater for that pro-ish market. It's kind of sad that they ditched it in the first place. But hey, it's back if you are looking to get Final Cut Studio for a cool thousand bucks. Uh, it's available through the Apple tele sales, I believe. Well, 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 what do you know? Apple have lost another iPhone 5. Apparently, uh, crazy reports uh, emerging early this week. Of course, when the iPhone 4 last year was being introduced, uh, it was kind of well documented that an iPhone 4 was lost at a bar. Um, Apple kind of sued the people who done it, and it was leaked. Gizmodo was all over it. They were the people who bought it off, the people who kind of found it in a bar. And for the exact same thing to happen this year, just sounds dodgy. You would think, you know, if it happened the first time, Apple would have taken great care of it. They would have, you know, enforced new security measures and so on. Uh, and the, the report really hasn't been confirmed. The blog pretty much posted a few days ago it was stolen and uh, Apple had called the police up and they kind of broke down doors and tried to find it. Then a similar report came up said Apple posed as police inspectors and you know kind of enforced or took the law in their own hand which is of course illegal. However that was rectified and the police department said no Apple came up to the police inspectors and said, look, we have a, an iPhone 4 or an iPhone 5 in the wild. It's been stolen, uh, you know, it's protected property and so on. And then Apple went alongside with the police officers and they searched the house, didn't find anything, came back out. 
And now today it's been kind of said that there's doubts about the story, they're not too sure if it's been made up or the police department is saying they have no information or no record on this iPhone 5 being lost at a bar. So all in all we don't really know if it's been lost. If it has been lost that's a huge fail on Apple's part for making the same mistake twice and you know were they just all celebrating that Steve Jobs has left, you know, going out to pubs, bars uh, and taking out you know, their new gadgets and leaving them there. I'm sure Tim Cook and co, i.e. the Apple police are on this case and uh, we should hear something in the next few days if it in indeed was lost. Pictures and videos should follow if, you know, if it did happen. And up next, if you thought China and Hong Kong were bad for fake Apple stores, well, I think Iraq just beat them, hands down. This is an Apple store in Iraq and as you can see, it, uh, Pretty much has the Apple logo, um, you know, bang on exact, and I'm sure the Apple police uh, are on their way to Iraq to shut this down. And last but not least, USB 3 may be appearing in Max. However, it's not going to happen this year. I guess we're really coming up to the end of the year. But it's going to most probably happen next year as Intel released their new chipset, which is known as Ivy Bridge, which is both compatible with USB 3 and Thunderbolt simultaneously. The current chipsets, I believe, only you know can, you can only have one technology, so you can have USB 3 or you can have the Thunderbolt technology. And since Apple invested quite a lot or heavily into Thunderbolt, of course they were going to go for that. And Steve Jobs did say he can't see USB 3, you know, kicking off. Um, but you know, USB 3, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's great. Definitely improved uh, over USB 2, of course. 5 gigabytes per second, but Thunderbolt is just taking that to the next level. 10 gigabytes per second, it's bi-directional, you can daisy chain devices. Um, so I would welcome, you know, a USB 3 um, port, especially because Amazon and you've got all these websites doing actual proper USB 3 devices. We've yet to see a Thunderbolt external hard drive or kind of any Thunderbolt technology. I believe there's like one or two, but you have to pay $1,000 for the pleasure of owning a Thunderbolt device. Um, but in, even when they do come out, they are going to be pricey. USB 3 has been on the market for some time now, so the prices are reasonable. It's something that I could spend money on, uh, so I would welcome the opportunity in having both USB 3 and Thunderbolt. But guys, that's it for this week in Apple. I hope you liked it. If you can leave a comment below, or if you're watching on iTunes, you can leave a comment in the ratings. That would be great. Remember, you can join me on iglassregion.com, twitter.com slash i6glassregion, facebook.com slash iglassregion. If you've got any cool stories, funny stories, of course, Apple related, do send them in. You know, email me through the website. If you have any general questions, you know, tweet or Facebook or email me through the website. As always, guys, I will see you guys in another life. Cheers. Send the package at the lowest price possible. Simple. Visit parcelmonkey.co.uk. Follow these four simple steps. Have the package collected from your doorstep and then sit back and relax.